finally some things are just worth waiting for guys so thank you for your patience um if you haven't um tuned in before then you'll know that we had five minutes of just nothing but me trying to frantically get everything working we had a little bit of a techie glitch but it's okay we are here now so if you want to hit any questions and I'll um, be happy to answer them for you for those of you who don't know me and I'm guessing there's a lot of you that don't know me. My name's Amanda and I'm a clinical cat behaviourist here in the UK. And so wherever you're watching around the globe, whether it's your lunchtime in the US over the pond or it's tea time in the UK or wherever you are, lovely to have you here. And please go ahead and ask me some questions. Um, hi, Ryder. You're the first person to say hello. Um, I've got a cat that's come to say hello here. I don't know whether this is Hugo. Um, there's actually, well, there was three cats in here, but I think they got fed up of waiting for their um, camera action and off they went. So um, normally there's quite a few in here because I've got a few treats waiting for them. But if you've got any comments, any questions, then now's your time to ask them. Your cat hisses at you, Ryder. Um, when scroll up cat hisses at you when you're in bed why does he do this well cats hiss not because they're aggressive they hiss because they're feeling perhaps a little bit insecure or not happy about something so I don't know I mean is your cat a shy cat because generally if you if you're in bed you should be relaxed and your cat should be feeling relaxed too so um the answer is to that. It's not a brilliant start, is it? I don't know, other than to tell you that cats don't hiss when they, because they're angry, cats hiss because they're feeling not happy about something. So I would have a look at your um, enrichment in the in the bedroom. Is there something that you can pop on your bed, like a snuffle mat or something to encourage um, your cat to be a little bit more welcoming? That might be something worth trying. Christina you've got a tortie and she's got an attitude oh, torties do have attitude don't they do you know what I don't think it's much about well it is about the colour but female cats are all torties or the sorry the other way around only tortoiseshells are female cats it's very very rare um, indeed I think it's hardly ever been seen that there's a, a male tortie so yeah they're always um, angry women aren't they really tortoiseshell cats but they are so much character. So Max, you've adopted some ferals. Now they've taken over and you're a slave to cats. Of course, it's game over. Um, well done you for taking in the ferals. And you know, feral cats can be just feral cats and that's fine. You don't have to habituate them to come into your house and sit on your knee. Um, some people actually want to do that and it's probably not fair. Let, let feral cats be feral cats and provide support for them. Um, presumably you'll do a TNR, um, get those cats neutered so they don't um, breed and you'll end up with hundreds of wanted kittens. You wouldn't want that because we come up to kitten season. Um, so that's great. You're a slave to your cats. Oh, amazing. Um, Bernie, how do you cut your cat's nails when she freaks out when I touch her feet? OK, this is a great question. It's really common. And hopefully Hugo's going to model. So you just start off like that, massaging, a little massage. And then maybe you give a little treat. So it's almost like a classical conditioning. But another great way is if you've got a licky mat and then you get one of these uh, churros. You have those in the States. I've checked. And you put one of those down. I'm trying to lift it for Hugo. Here, yeah, Hugo, can you see? Where are we? There we go. There you go. No. Um, anyway, he'll be licking that now and I can massage his feet. So he's getting quite used to that. And you can see Hugo's claws are pretty trimmed already. And that's because then I just get used to playing with them like this. And he's now licking that licky mat. Um, I don't know whether you can see there. Um, no, you probably can't. Um, so he's quite happy licking that and I'm messing around with his feet and I would do that regularly. Um, give him a little treat. So he's actually more interested in what was on there. So that's that's a way to go for that. OK. Um, and just do it a little at a time. So he really wants to go for the treats now. Um, so don't 
um, just think that you've got to do every single claw in one go. It could be a claw at a time, and that's all you need to do. Um, so I hope that's helped, um, definitely. And it is really important that you do trim the claws and also provide really, really good scratching posts. So you want something really, really robust that's going to enable the cat to have that full body stretch because that's really important because scratching is pleasurable for them. So I know that in some parts of the States, they um, declaw and it's actually against the law here in the UK. And I think the tide is turning, if I'm right, over in the States to um, to stop declawing because it's effectively like us having our fingers chopped off at there. Cats need their claws to balance, to grip and to communicate because in between their interdigital glands here, there, They've got little scent marking glands and they need those to be able to scent where they are, to tell other um, cats in the area that they're there, because that's how they communicate with the scent glands. Largely, a lot of their communication is, is nonverbal. Right, hopefully Hugo won't claw, uh, climb over the computer and then cut me off because that wouldn't be well. Um, OK, so cat one, female three year old, has an extreme anxiety. Anything makes a hide inside the couch or about to move. How can help the move be less stressful for her? Um, oh, OK. So if, if anybody wanted to go over to my TikTok account, same name, Kitty City Cat Behaviorist, I've done quite a few videos on just this. Um, cats are creatures of habit and routine, and it's really, really important that they have routine because that makes them feel comfortable and confident. So when you're starting to pack up the house move, I always think if you're starting to pack the boxes, turn the boxes into a bit of a climbing structure. So maybe put some toys um, on top of the boxes and and things like this wedged into a box so this is dangling spray it with something like pet remedy or valerian spray or even catnip that is going to encourage the cats to jump up on the boxes and so as there becomes more and more boxes in whatever room they see them as a climbing structure and somewhere maybe to rest and it's not too distressing for them but moving on to the anxiety now I have checked in the states you have got such things as um, uh, phytotherapy such as pet remedy so I'm not selling this and I'm not on commission. These things actually work. So anything that you see me mention in any video, it's because I've tried it, I've tested it and it goes in my behavior modification plans for clients. So um, pet remedy works in a different way. It's got calming catatractants in. You can get it in a, a plug in. Obviously, our plug is a bit different to the ones in the States, but you can get it in a plug in. You can get it in a spray. You can even get it in a um a quick wash not foaming um dry not dry shampoo but something like that you can see it just pumps up like that and if you wanted to you can just um stroke your cat with that degreases your cat but it also keeps them nice and calm now that's um got vetiver um clary sage and valerian so they're all cat attractants but they're on the very soporific and calming end of the cat attractants whereas a catnip is on the stimulant end so you wouldn't want to give your cat um catnip if you're actually taking it in a in a crate or taking it to move home because it's a stimulant and it might just agitate them so you want to be looking at something like pet rem pet remedy um, another thing again i've checked you have um comfort zone in the on amazon in the in the states and here in the uk this works in a different way so this is um again it's a, a plug-in device it's just clear that pet remedy really really smells it's not unpleasant um whereas this is we can't smell it with with our nose at all but cats can and that's the synthetic blend of their cat the cat's facial pheromones so when a cat is marking its territory it'll actually walk up to a wall and mark it like this and that is them depositing their scent onto the territory and it makes them feel relaxed so when we plug something like this in it's filling the, the area with the synthetic pheromones that are meant to mimic the cat's own pheromones and it makes them feel relaxed. So if you had something like that and you had um, the pet remedy like that, 
that would be great. So that would modify the external environment. And then if you want to actually then give them something else, this is a nutraceutical called Anxitae. Marvellous. So it's really, really effective and you can get it in the States. Um, I think I made a note, actually. It's about $36 and that's on Amazon. Now, these tablets, you see them there. I'm getting used to the camera because I'm so used to TikTok and the, and the camera's in different places. So this is what the, um, the tablets look like. And generally cats will have half a tablet twice a day and it's palatable. So if you've got a cat that doesn't like to be medicated I've only known about two or three cats that won't have this just by having it like you'd give a dreamy or something they go mm, very nice thank you very much and it tends to work pretty quickly so that's an amino acid called L-theanine that's the active ingredient there and it's non-pharmaceutical so cats of any age can have that and it's not going to cause them a problem and they can have that from um, as long as you feel that they need to so I would say for your cats um, uh, Frida, that is really going to help her a lot. So for anyone with cats with anxiety, please get this. It, I promise you, it is an absolute game changer. There are other things as well um, that you can that you can give your cat. Similarly, um, using nutraceuticals and not pharmaceuticals. If you need, if you have got a cat with extreme anxiety, then it's always worth consulting your um, veterinary clinic and they will be able to pres prescribe something a bit more um, on the pharmaceutical level. But it's worth, you know, trying these things first. Come on then. Oh, you go. Are you going to come up? No, he's not. Right. I hope that's helped and I haven't waffled on too much about that. Um, Helene, Helene, that's a lovely name. So similar question here um, about other than fell away. Well, this obviously you have fell away optimum, maybe. Um, this is a, another thing that you can, it's the same sort of thing. I'm not sure what blend of fer facial pheromones these guys use in theirs um, because you'll find with the fell away family, there is fell away uh, friends, fell away classic, and fell away optimum. Personally, I would only want to be recommending the fell away optimum. Um, that seems to be the most effective that I find anyway. So hopefully those things that I've discussed about the house move, um, Helene, are really going to help you and your cats there, especially the Anxitane. And using those multi, you know, using them as a tandem um, multimodal approach will really, really help. Um, you're welcome, um, Bernie. You're very welcome. Gosh, you goes in. I've got some um, puzzle feeders here and I've got a kicker that's um, just been sprayed with a bit of catnip and he's now digging his way through the box. Um, hi, Christine. You have to swabble your tortie and hold her while another person trims her, her dragon lady claws because she'll fight and snarl if I don't. Oh, well, again, I think it's, it's rather than just going, OK, I'm going to cut your claws. Some cats do need to be swaddled or cocooned. I get that. Um, but also just try just massaging the feet and build on it on a daily basis. So you're not just um, running a marathon, you're actually doing your training. Um, so little by little, it may work. And again, you can start um, on your hands. You could spray some pet remedy, spray that on your hands or even some of the, um, the foam. I actually quite like the smell of this um, on your hands and your cat's going to be attracted to that and thinking you know and then you can leave that scent on the paws but it's always good to make every interaction a positive one for your cat that's really really going to help but slowly slowly cat you get your monkey or cut your cat's claws whatever um, any over-the-counter anti-parasitic medication I can get for your kitty's ear mites um, I think if it's the same in the US as it is over here, I would always be recommending go to your veterinary clinic um, because a lot of the things that are sold over the counter are either ineffective or can cause a problem. They can sometimes cause a reaction um, with your cat. So I'd always prefer to advise anyone to go to either a specialist prescriber um, and if that's in a maybe a pet drugstore and they are licensed to do, do certain medications. I know here in the UK um, there is a medication, but it is vet only or um, specialist prescriber, and that does um, ear mites very, very well. I mean, 
once they've got ear mites, you can start cleaning the ears as much as you want to, but you're not going to get rid of those pesky little critters until they've had um, proper medication. So pop along to your vet there. Um, so your kitten won't allow, hi Joanne, your kitten won't allow anyone to pick her up. But she scratches and fights to get away. OK, some cats are what I call ground magnet cats and they don't like being picked up. And the reason is cats have a, a basic innate survival technique. And you've probably heard it before. It's called fight or flight. And if you're picking a kitten up and it's not been maybe habituated, which means it's not been brought up in the early stages of its life with lots of handling from humans, then you are actually withdrawing and taking away that cat's survival instinct of being able to run away or fight. So that's why your cat is scratching, because that's all that the kitten has got left. So instead of trying to pick the kitten up, I would work on lots and lots of ground affection, ground play, thinking of something like this is really good. Again, popping. Um, you don't have to just keep putting licky licks. Um, churros, I think I mentioned those. Those are really, really good. Um, there's Gim Cat, um, which is a malt paste. So that could go on there as well. Really smear it in so that the kitten is licking away at that. You can even smear the kitten food in there and then just concentrate on building a bond with your kitten because the more you pick that kitten up, the more it's a negative reaction and a negative response that cat's going to break down it's you know your trust is going to be breaking down rather than building so take your time with your kitten and think about other fun ways as well so um snuffle mats are really really good um i've got a couple here so this is um i would say this is a little kitten one so you could put lots of little toys or maybe treats in there and get the kitten's attention by popping treats toys and then just keep stroking the cat get the cat used to um human contact really and and just build on it it could be that if it doesn't like being picked up it could be that it's um i don't think it is it will be a feral because you wouldn't be able to do it but if it hasn't had that habituation and being well socialized in the sensitive period um that's when they're very very young then you are just going to have to put the time in take the time that it takes um so you know, it'll take a lot less time in the end. I hope that's helped you and good luck with your little kitten. Just take your time with her. Um, Ivanka, my cat likes to lick, chew my hair. Do you know why she does it? And can I stop her, especially when I'm asleep? I'd like to keep my hair. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, well, I've got a couple of hairdressers as well in, in my house and they love it when it's just been freshly washed. And um yeah, they they love to do it. So your your hair is going to smell. It's going to smell predominantly of you. And what they're doing, they are aloe marking onto you. So it's just them grooming. So it's a it's a huge compliment. And uh, your cat is being super affectionate, which is is fabulous. But um, yeah, I can get where you're coming from. You don't want your cat chewing your hair because um, that is only going to cause an issue especially if they keep eating it because you don't want them to eat your hair because then you're going to have human hair balls and that's not very good either um so what i would suggest is i mean i don't know i don't know whether you can plait your hair or tie it back um to try and deter your cat it might be that your cat is doing this as an attention seeking thing so basically um, your cat has learned when it chews or licks your hair, you sort of say, oh, no, don't, don't do that. And then you give them attention. So it could be that that's the case. Um, if it is, again, I would be um, putting some loaded snuffle bats or um, hide and seek feeders around the bedroom to try and get the cat to focus on other things rather than your hair I mean you could go down the lines of spraying your hair with um bitter apple spray or something but then you've got to walk around smelling like a um a moldy apple haven't you and that's really not very good either so I would I would give that a go I think it's more likely that your cat is doing it for for obviously because your cat loves you and it's bonding with you but I also think it's doing it because it's attention seeking and it has learned by doing this with your hair you then 
respond. So another thing would be to completely ignore your cat when it's doing that. If you can, even if you have to go to bed with um, a shower cap on, if your cat can't have access to your hair, it's going to eventually not bother it's like when people say to me oh what can I do about my cat it's waking me up at three o'clock in the morning and I answer very swiftly earplugs and an eye mask um if you don't respond to that cat then they very soon within seven to ten days they will forget and they won't do it anymore so and you might look a bit odd with a, a shower cap on in bed at night but if it if it fixes that problem for you then then that's great um Okay, uh, Helene, you've tried gabapentin vet, of course, yeah, in the past, and it did nothing. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't talk about anything medical and medications because that's out of my remit, um, but I definitely would try the, um, the, the nutraceuticals that I've mentioned because they work uh, phenomenally, and sometimes I don't even have to refer people to vets because that in itself has done the job with... Um, uh, play as well so you can't just have a cat and leave it in its room in, in any room and just ignore it you've got to give them the attention they're not easy animals they're not um a quick fix rather than having a dog because you have to walk a dog cats are extremely intelligent and they need a lot of attention so um hopefully that'll help and maybe next time I'm on you can come and tell me has it worked and good luck um, with the lady that's moving house as well. Angus your cat your female cat sometimes misses the litter box and she urinates right by the edge of the litter box and the urine spills out it's happened once in a while been to the vet and all clear thoughts yes I have got some thoughts I would say um, obviously I I don't know the type of litter box. I don't know the size of the cat and that all matters. But let's say that you have got um, a normal square litter box that you had when you first had your cat and then your cat has grown and grown and grown and you've still got the same litter box. Then the litter tray is going to be too small if the cat is um, sitting at the side of the litter box and choosing to wee out of it has your cat got a substrate aversion? So always I would look at the location of the tray. So is the tray, um, does it, can the cat access the tray all the way around or is there a flap there that the cat doesn't feel comfortable going in with the flap? In which case remove the flap. I hate cat flaps. Um, these doors that go into cat trays, they're there just for humans and you know cats don't like going into toilets like that where they have no escape route. So if you've got um, a hooded tray, maybe try um, a, an open bath shape one, for example. So providing a litter tray buffet of choice and also different types of substrate will help as well so if you've got a loose loose um, substrate um, that is very very easy for the cat to dig I don't know what the litter of choice in the states is but it would be something like um, van cat here um, everclean or tigerino and all of those are really really soft um, almost sand like texture and they have to be really deep so you need something like that so I'd be wanting to put a really deep litter in there to encourage your cats to dig and then maybe if she can dig she, she'll she actually position herself a bit better in the tray. Also um, don't say how old she is because if she is say a senior cat it may be that she's got a bit of arthritis and, and to actually get into the box and squat is a bit too painful for her so again I'd work I'd want to um, get the all clear from the vet um, is there any pain if, if she is arth arthritic for example then have a have a look at that um, box is three times the size okay so um, yeah so the box is is good so the box is a good size angus um you have an open box as well you hate doors great um sorry wendy if your questions missed i know i will try and scroll back up so bear with me keep the questions coming i will i really will help um so i would want to know then angus um just to summarize on that um if you've had a urine sample it's all clear i would look at your substrate i would look at your location of the tray and I would also look at 
uh, at pain being a differential for her as well, if that's the issue. OK. Um, OK, Wendy, why does my cat boop my nose? What makes a cat do that? It's oh, Wendy. Um, that is extreme affection. Um, again, I've done a video of that on my, one of my TikTok and cats will literally bunt each other because it's such a lovely greeting. So your cat is booping your nose because that's what cats do when they are clearly bonded to not only their favourite human, but also to their own cat family as well. If they're bonded, they will boop noses and they are transferring their scent from the nose onto the other cat and vice versa. So it's a huge compliment. Your cat loves you. Um, cat, you love my channel. Got to the live late, so starting from the beginning, but want to say thank you. Oh, and it's your beautiful Tabby Cat's seventh birthday. Happy birthday, Tabby Cat. What's what's her name? That's lovely. Ivanka, you're welcome. I'm really pleased. You're going to look beautiful in your hairnet tonight, I'm sure. Um, yeah, it'd be so good to put a picture on your social media tonight. <laughs> dressed for bed tonight um hopefully I'll, I'll be back on another um tuesday and you'll be able to fill me in on on how it all went wendy you've answered your question shiny shiny man along that line of preventing chewing the hair your six week old likes to play and bite my hand which you can tolerate however my wife can't tolerate it so the question is how oh gosh this is a brilliant question i'm so glad you've answered this so there is such a thing as called inappropriate play now when you have a kitten have you seen those videos where the kitten's on its back and the cat parents will go tickle 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 and the cat does this um then that progresses to the cat um to the human tickling the tummy and the cat the kitten will latch on and those sort of spiky teeth Yes, you can tolerate them. They're absolutely fine. But that kitten is going to grow and grow and grow. And so are those teeth. And your kitten will be trained by you that it's acceptable to use hands as playthings. So two things that you do. You don't play with your cat ever with your hands. You use age appropriate things that are an extension of your hands so this is a lovely knitted goldfish here um so something like this or even um i mean this is a bit battered but something like that um for a kitten i'd call that age appropriate um these little kickers there are these kitten ones of these as well um and use those so you can play with the kitten and your hands are nowhere near that kitten's mouth because that kitten is going to grow. And as I said, his teeth are going to grow. And yes, you will be training your kitten that it's acceptable to bite and chew your hands. Now, if your kitten, because at the me in, the, in the meantime, your kitten is used to latching onto your hands. If it does, you want to go completely still. Don't do anything. Look away shift your body, you know, your body position so that you're not engaging with the cat anymore and leave it. And hopefully it will just eventually get bored after a minute or so if you can stand it. And then it will release. When it releases, move your hand away and then go and find an appropriate toy. So don't even vocalise with them because, again, vocalisation can be a reward and you're then encouraging your cat, your kitten. So inappropriate play, trust me, is one of the biggest causes of cat aggression cases. And people don't realise that they are training their cat to be aggressive. So I hope that helps. And yeah, keep still and use extensions of your hand. I hope that helps. Um, all cat lovers, uh, mechanical word freedom fighter, all cat lovers, please keep food and drink bowls separate. Absolutely. Um, food and drink bowls should never be put together because, and it really annoys me, it's a big bugbear of mine. When you go into any of these pet stores, they always have bowls where there's, you know, like really next to each other. So, and, and it's almost like, okay, 
your cat hasn't got the intelligence to work out where its food and its water is, so they have to put them together? I don't think so. Cats need to have their water away from their food because they innately know that any food next to a water source is likely to be contaminated. So therefore they don't drink. And we really need to hydrate our cats anyway because cats are really notoriously difficult to get water into them. So by putting your food next to your cat water, you're just going to um, reduce the chances of them drinking as much as they should. And for anyone who's got a cat with, um, you know, failing kidneys, you want to get as much water into them as possible. So, re, you know, resources should be away from each other. And also don't think about a bowl. Why don't you bin the bowl? You don't need bowls. You can give your cats other things. You can put food in. Um, Feeders, hide and seek feeders if anybody wants to see any I've, i'm surrounded by them, them all if you if they have wet food you can give them a slow feeder like this phoebe and doc on um hide and seek feeders again phoebe and doc go and hide these around the place get your cat engaging in its predatory mode and thinking okay i don't just walk to a bowl and eat i actually go and have to go and hunt for my food so you can reduce a lot of that cat anxiety and aggression just simply by getting your cat to forage as well sorry i've gone a bit off track there but yeah i've got a thing about bowls being food and water next to each other i even had one lady um and she put the food and the water next to her litter tray because she really thought that she was doing a good thing. Bless her heart. She really thought that, you know, here's Kitty, that's your food, that's your water and there's your toilet. It's all together. And I just said, would well, you want to go and eat your dinner next to the toilet? No, I don't think so. And neither does Kitty. Um, so think about where you position your resources. Um, and again, if you've got a cat that's not wanting to go to its litter tray, and the litter tray is in the middle of a hallway or next to a really busy laundry room, then would you want to go and sit on the loo in a hallway with people walking past every two minutes? So cats like a bit of privacy when they go to the toilet. So um, hopefully I've not missed anybody else. So Diana, uh, we have uh, a two, three dilute calico and a nine month old torty that seems to fight hiss at calico after often both have been on the prozac and this has decreased issues but how do we help them get along okay so obviously the um antidepressants can help um anxiety aggression and i'm guessing i'm hoping that both cats are neutered um if they're not neutered then your female your nine month old needs to be neutered that will really really help um it's good that the um, antidepressants have actually subsided some of the issues so how do you help them get along um a lot of the, uh, the things that i've just mentioned so you want to be looking to get some um uh, synthetic pheromones in place you want to get some um phytotherapy in so something like your pet remedy get those plugged in you can you can still use anxiotine whilst on Prozac. There's no contraindications with those. And also, and this is a biggie, make sure they have plenty of enrichment. So think about a play sequence. Get on YouTube. There's a channel called Patsy's Garden. It's amazing. Um, lots and lots of great big fat wood pigeons and squirrels. And, and the lady's really creative within this channel. So she does like seasonal um, props and everything. It's just so lovely, this channel. And gay cats bonding, watching it together. So if they're in a room and you turn the volume up and you can hear all the birds and everything, and they're in there, start increasing the amount of time that they spend together by using a licky mat. You get two of these. And you put them, you know, fair enough, put them enough apart, then they can be in the same room. And when they are together, good and positive things happen. So I talked about a play sequence then. So it would be that a cat will start its predatory um, behavior by looking and watching for prey. So if you provide them with cat TV, that is the first part of that play sequence. And then you can bring about maybe um, a wand or you can bring about the snuffle mats and then they have to go and forage and then they get the reward straight away. So 
something, a, a snuffle mat like this, I'm going to cover my face up now, don't all cheer, but there you go, that snuffle mat there, that is big enough for two cats. So you can have one cat one and one the other. And this is actually a dog snuffle mat. Um, you can hide toys and treats in all of them and you can give the enrichment needs to be upped really. So basically when they get together, timetable what they're going to do so that you don't have to think, OK, what did I do yesterday? I always advise have a Monday to Sunday timetable where you get different toys out, maybe put them in um, a shoebox. So you bring out Monday's toys and then put them all back in at the end of Monday and then Tuesday's toys come out because cats are like toddlers. They don't want to have the same toys out all of the time. So make sure that you're rotating your toys as well. Um, so definitely look at your enrichment. Don't scold them for any hissing. Again, just ignore that and, and just, you know, try and think about what you can give them um, to initially tolerate each other. But then also think that that one day maybe the dynamic is going to change and they will be a lot more together. So hopefully that that's helped. Um, Oh, both cats are fixed. OK, Deanna, that's that's brilliant. So that really will um, stop um, if, if, say, if one of them um, wasn't neutered, that would have been an issue. But that's good that they're neutered. So I think your pet remedy, your phytotherapy and uh, your natural pheromones, your synthetic pheromones, sorry. And, and also you can actually cross scent. So if you get a, a sock on your hand, go over to one cat and wipe its mouth, go over to the other cat and wipe its mouth with the sock and then back again. So they are cross scenting or you are artificially cross scenting. So they're going to get a little bit, they'll be tolerating each other's scent a little bit better. That, that normally works quite well. Um, okay, so, um, okay, Shiny, I'm really glad you, you liked my rant about that because I have got to think about bowl. bowls being next to each other and, and flaps on cat flaps. Really don't like that. Um, so, oh yeah, Wendy, cats, yeah, love water fountains. They are the best. Um, XG, if my cat is aggressive towards outdoor cats, She's fine with her sister coming over. Am I able to get another cat still? Um, what age is your cat? Because as a rule of thumb, if you've got a solitary cat that is really, really quite um, opposed to seeing cats in the environment and has a negative reaction, I don't particularly think that that cat is going to be a sociable bringing another cat in. So it's it's one of those, really. I mean, if you were to get another cat, I would definitely get a kitten and I would get a confident kitten um, and, and, and see. Um, so she's so she's got she's fine with the sister. So I, I have. Have you got two cats then? Next year, you've got a sister, the two cats and they get along. Um if that's if that's the case, you can afford a third one and she is happy with her sister. So she's already in a multi cat environment. Then a kitten may work. But I definitely wouldn't get a mid age or a young cat or anything. I'd definitely go for a kitten. Um, glad that helped, Deanna. Uh, hi, Jerry. Um, you feed your three cats a raw diet. I used to buy pre-made raw, but they raise the prices to more than human organic. I shop at the Asian food store, organs, meaty bone and fairy proteins. That's brilliant. Horses for courses. You know, you feed your cat whatever food, as long as it's species specific, i.e. don't give your cat dog food. Um, you feed your cat whatever you want. Obviously, if you're doing if you're making your own raw, then you'll need certain nutrients to add to that such as taurine um but there are different supplements uh, as well that you can you can get um but that's great if you're you know people um do make their own raw and feed raw very successfully if anyone's had an issue with raw um and digestive issues etc for their cat it tends to be that it's the storage or the way that it's made isn't um hygienic so as long as you're treating that food that raw meat as you would your own raw meat then then that then that's fine um 
So one of your cat, Angus, is a, basically a dog puppy with other people, but is petrified of anyone, not you. How do you help? Oh, I see you've got two. OK, you've tried bringing guests, cat, guests over and no. Hopefully other people can read that question as well, because I've just blurbled my way through there. So, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record. But what you need to be doing is putting that environmental help in place first. So you need your pet remedy and you need your synthetic pheromones and get yourself some anxetane for the cat not for you and and then whenever somebody comes um i think it's always a good thing first if you have a doorbell to try and um have you heard of pavlov's dogs where the the they rang a bell and the dogs were eventually trained to they got a treat every time the bell rang and eventually the dogs would salivate just at the sound of the bell um a bit like that knock on you know make a knocking sound or knock on your door or ring your doorbell and give the cat a treat that's the first thing so then the cat will associate anybody coming in with a positive thing and then maybe get the people who do come in initially just maybe offer the cat a treat if the cat wants to go off somewhere else that's fine um just then just ask the people to ignore the cat unless the cat comes to them so not all cats want to be sociable so it's also worth bearing that in mind that if your cat doesn't want to be sociable with other people and you've tried some um classical conditioning and he or she still doesn't want to be sociable then don't push it be cat led on everything and you know don't try and make a square peg go into a round hole cats have personalities just like we do and it might be that you've got an unconfident cat that doesn't want to go and be gregarious and socialize and that's fine it's accepting the cat for who he or she is so um Okay, so Deanna, use fell away plugins and pheromone collars as well. Okay, are you using the um, optimum? Because that's really, really good. Um, you've tried the um, yeah pet remedy and anxetane. Thank you, Helene. Um, okay, she's three, so three years old. XG is not too old. I reckon you could get away with with a kitten at that age. Her sister comes over for play dates since she was young. Oh, I see your friend has a sister. Okay, well, she's um, she's obviously been habituated with her sister. Um, chances are then you you if you go for a kitten, it may get she may get along. OK, um, yeah, you're very welcome. I, I hope it works out for you. If um, pop back along on another Tuesday, you'll get plenty of notification when I'm back. Cat chat Tuesday. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Um, so, Helene, doorbell rings, cat jets to under a chair or some other hiding place okay so that you just need to work on that so the doorbell that's when you need to pair the doorbell with a really really high reward treat so it's got to be something that your cat doesn't normally have or it is such a you know such a really really smelly treat um we are Vitacraft yums. I don't know whether you have these I didn't google that but these are really pongy and smelly and cat these are just like my high reward treat for my cats um so maybe something like that you know doorbell just even if you have um the sound of a doorbell on your phone and because pair it, the the conditioning it has to happen really quickly so say you press the doorbell noise and your cat is with you give your cat a treat very very quickly and again something that's really pongy and do that first and so that then the cat becomes um not as panicked when it hears a doorbell sound and then start to the actual doorbell so i hope give that a go that that may work um uh i'm just reading these um bengal oh hi hi Rhonda. um i recognize your name i'm sure um my bengal has been on phylloxine for a year and although it re originally helped him with spraying all over the house, it now seems to have stopped and he's reverted back to spraying again. Yeah. So Bengals, hybridised cats. I've got some Bengals. I feel the pain that you have with Bengals. Um, what you need to do is get the cleaning protocol right. Go on to my um, TikTok account or my Facebook account. There is a video and it's called the most boring video that you'll ever watch today. And it is a boring video, but it's it's the most 
useful and beneficial if you've got a cat that's house soiling. So to start off with, you want a black light. So this is um, called a black light, it's a UV light, and you go along in the area, in times of dust, dust times, go around your house, areas that you think your house, your cat is sprayed, um, it'll glow luminous and at that point that's when you know then that you need to take action in that in that area um you then need to get a product um, now in the uk it's called ideal 365 i made a note of this it's called um i think it's called med choice um in the states and it's available on amazon and it's um a odor eliminator um, and it will get rid of it's not just a fancy um, one that you get from the dollar store or something like that it is it's it's really really good and so you spray that on with the 365 you make a dilution of 50 50 um the med med choice i think is just a, a spray that you you spray on then you'd get some h2o aka water spray that on dry it off and then this Da -da. This is this is the best thing ever. I love this. Um, this is isopropyl alcohol, and you need to spray this on all areas after you've done your um, med choice or your three six five because this gets rid of the fatty deposits that the odor eliminator will leave behind. So once you've eradicated all of that cleaning and you have to do a deep clean you may go through your home with one of these and actually be horrified at all the spray that there is everywhere but you've got to be meticulous with that and then each time you cat sprays clean it up and then I'd be putting a little um something like uh well either a snuffle mat I've shown you that already or um a slow feeder or can you see that cat snacker there um, that's the Phoebe and Doc one as well. And that will have um, treats inside. And so it helps reprogram the, the cats to thinking, OK, don't spray there. I'm actually going to eat there instead. So it might be that you end up with lots of little things like this about the place um, that have got food in. So the areas become food resource areas rather than spraying areas. But obviously this only works if you have dried food or put treats down. They don't all have to be calorific. You could put something like freeze dried chicken down um, and something like that, I think, would help. That's addressing the, um, the cleaning protocol but then you have to look okay well why is your cat spraying and it's spraying because it's either um it's well i'm hoping it's been neutered um so it isn't um, reproductive marking it could be anxiety it, and then okay well why is it anxious so what can you do to negate the anxiety and normally just with a bengal something like real high enrichment will really make a difference and a timetable being put in can make a massive difference so that's what i would do with the cat spraying it's one of my favorite topics i can talk about cat anxiety and cat spraying um all day long um so i, I hope that helps and again i've done videos just on spraying on my um tiktok account so have a look and good luck i hope that helps um how do you become a cat behaviorist what a great question um well you have to study do a lot of study it's an unprotected title so anyone could read a book and say oh well, i i know i know a lot about cats now i've just read a book i'll be a, a a cat behaviourist. Um, it's a bit like a veterinary nurse ti it's title in the, in the UK anyway. It's unprotected, so anyone can call themselves one. Um, hopefully that's going to change um, very, very soon, because if you go to anybody who isn't a clinically qualified cat behaviourist, they could give you bad advice, and then you could, you could possibly pay for that service and then go and um, be very disappointed that their advice doesn't work. So it's always best to get a recommendation from your vet um, and, and then you know that you're getting somebody who is clinically um, trained, qualified, regulated and uh, continually assessed um, because that's what happens um, to me. So I'm a member of the APBC and the ABTC here in the, the UK. Um, so, yeah, you just have to study, do a lot of study, um, specifically um, 
for me it was cats but I had to train to do all animals um, but then I specialised in cats uh, doing a lot of case studies you obviously start off doing a lot of free work um, because that's how you build your knowledge with the free work you, um, and uh, and and then that's it, really. You know, you just have to, you know, get your qualifications and you have to be assessed, um, especially if you want to be um, a member of um, a regular a regulatory body. Um, and uh, and then you know that you can give good advice. And part of giving good advice is knowing when if you can't give that advice that you say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I will go find somebody who can. Um, so you do self-regulate yourself a lot. Um, I hope that helps you. Um, so, Helene, I think you're having a little bit of a conversation between um, the two of you there. Uh, Jerry, you've got to leave. Oh, thank you. I'm really pleased. It's OK. Go and enjoy your the rest of your day. Uh, Thank you for watching and hopefully you'll come back another time. Um, and what else have I got here? Another question. Um, you love this. Thank you. You've got three indoor cats and six outdoor clipped ferals. You want to find a way to. Oh, OK. That's amazing. Um, you've got some great um uh, behaviorists in the UK so I would start following some of them and obviously if you wanted to give my channel a follow as well that would be great we've all got something to offer um, we've all got different thoughts and processes but one thing we have got in common is that we all love cats and we all want the best outcome and we want to make cats lives a lot lot better and the one way we can do that is by educating and that's what this lives about really it's 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 not teaching anyone how to suck eggs and say, you must do this. Um, it's about teaching people through, um, well, by imparting knowledge. And if you want to pick something up from this live tonight and I, you go away and you can then share this experience with somebody else, then that's great. That's done a good thing. So little by little, cats' lives around the globe are going to improve. And that's what that's what it's all about, really. Um, understanding cats. Um, uh, oh, cats, you, you great advice. And you're still not halfway through. Um, oh, and name Serena, and she was a rescue from Canada, and now she lives with you. Oh, you're in the UK. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Um, well, that's lovely. Um, that's a Hugo you have. What breed is he? Well, I'll, I'll whisper it because Hugo thinks he's a Bengal, but he's actually a Bengal cross. I don't. I don't <laughs> look at him. So, oh no. Um, and he's. Um, a uh, five-year-old uh, domestic short hair, but he is um, a Bengal crop. We said it then, a Bengal. So cover his ears up. And he's um, he's my. Uh, I've got um, five cats, um, and I've got two um, snow Bengal cats as well. But they tend not to come and join me on lives. But I've got um, Basil. Is a geriatric. He's asleep behind me in his little box and um, I've got one or two others just pottering around um, but there's only a few that that come and join me for the lives because they they don't wreck havoc um oh okay you're going to follow me on YouTube you don't subscribe to TikTok that's fine um I don't put all of my videos on YouTube um I do put some on Facebook some on um Instagram I'm about and, and if anybody wants to um you know drop a message via cats.com that's fine any questions and hopefully I'll be back again I think we put a date a week so we're going to do every other Tuesday cat chat Tuesday so if you're catching you in your lunch break that's brilliant um living in the gray area all my handle is kitty city cat behaviorist across all platforms so you can find me there and um yeah my cat is so chill <laughs> Um, it would be really bad though, wouldn't it? If if I'm a cat behaviorist and I have wild cats everywhere, that wouldn't be good. But um, sometimes I have to demonstrate on Hugo how to give medication. And he's like, oh, great, syringe. I really, really love syringes. Um, 
on that note, I realised I am talking for way longer than I ever thought I was going to. Um, yes, I am Kitty City on Facebook. Um, and my fabulous moderator, um, I'm keeping her from having a dinner as well. So um, Hugo's obviously saying now, OK, it's his tea time now. So thank you so much to everybody who's tuned in to watch. Thank you to those who've watched on Catch Up. Hope you really enjoy it or have enjoyed it. And I haven't bored you totally. Um, sorry for the glitch at the beginning, guys, but all remedied now. And hopefully I will see you all another time. And if you've got any questions in the meantime, please um, pop them over to cat.com. And um, or you can, I'm sure you can add them on here and then I'll pick up those questions next time. But um, and maybe next time I'll have Noodle with me or Basil and uh, they like to say hi to all the viewers as well. So have a lovely rest of your day. And yeah, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, we will be back in a couple of weeks if you want more. So make sure you get, give this video lots and lots of thumbs up because if I get the thumbs up, then I'll know that you liked listening to me waffle on about cats, everybody. So um, bye for now, or is it meow for now? <laughs>